In this tutorial video, we will be looking at the constant Q method of frequency decomposition, which is part of the standard frequency decomposition workflow. In the previous video, linked in the description box, we looked at the constant bandwidth technique. We talked about how frequency resolution can be traded off against vertical resolution and vice versa. Here, we apply these concepts again, but this time to the constant Q methods. The initial setup is the same as in the previous tutorial video, where we select our input volume and then choose a time slice or horizon to optimize on. So when we get to the frequency decomposition parameterization window, we have two constant Q methods available, in addition to the constant bandwidth. The main difference between the constant Q methods and the constant bandwidth is that the bandwidths and filter lengths are now variable. This allows for an improvement in vertical resolution, as the higher frequencies have a shorter filter length. However, due to the larger bandwidths required to achieve these smaller filter lengths, we trade off resolution in the frequency domain. As mentioned in the previous video on constant bandwidth, there are several parameters which can impact on the filter length and bandwidth achieved. These include the minimum frequency and the bandwidth scale. In addition to these two, when using the constant Q method, the maximum frequency can also have an impact. There are two constant Q methods available. With the uniform constant Q method, the frequencies are spaced equally, whereas with the exponential constant Q method, the frequencies increase exponentially. One technique might be beneficial over the other, depending on the frequency content of your data. However, generally they will give similar results. So the main take home point is that using a shorter filter length will allow a greater vertical resolution to be achieved. However, this will require a larger bandwidth, which will lead to a reduction in frequency resolution. So the two are always being traded off against each other. If we continue onto the blend preview mode, we can assign our three bands to the RGB or red, green, blue color channels and then have a look at the results on our preview slice. If we go back and look at the actual bands I've included there, we can see what portion of the frequency spectrum they cover. We can then go back and readjust the bands to some that are closer to our dominant frequency. And this will give us a better color separation in our blend. Finally, if we take a look at our blend in the 3D scene, and we can compare this directly to the constant bandwidth method, which we looked at last week. So now we can see the obvious difference in vertical resolution, as well as the amount of colors, which is a function of the frequency resolution.